Where should, okay, there we are. Sorry, everyone, if I'm like 30 seconds late. Um, Julie and I were chatting and catching up, and we didn't realize it was three o'clock. So, welcome to uh, welcome to Fly Tying Monday. Say hi, Julia. Come on, Julia. Say hi. Hi, everybody. Happy Fly Tying Monday. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. So I know you're all glad that Julie is here. And um, who's new this week? I want to see. I want to see who's new. So if you're new, give a shout out in the, in the comments. Like to like to see. Uh, always like to see how many how many people are uh, coming here for the first time and this thing that we've been doing for. Oh God, it's gonna coming on two years this coming March. Every every Monday, I don't think we missed we missed a few when I was traveling, but not many. So um, I don't see anybody new. Ah, Kira, Kira is new. Welcome, Kira. That's great. Well, welcome to Fly Tying Monday, and um, we're gonna be tying a streamer today because um, winter time is streamer time sometimes streamer and nymph time and so we're going to be tying a streamer this one's called um hawkins hat trick and i actually got it out of out of the the orvis fly tying guide and uh chuck and uh, it's one of the patterns in the back chuck hawkins is an orvis endorsed uh, guide longtime orvis endorsed guide out of uh, traverse city michigan and there's a number of uh of Chuck Hawkins streamers that um, that we sell in the catalog and uh, and the in this book uh, there's the little rascal there's the hat trick Hawkins nutcracker and the triple double they're all great streamers designed for designed for trout and uh, for steelhead and of course you know for anything they'll take a streamer bass and pike and uh, things like that but. Um, we're going to tie the uh, Hawkins hat trick today. So it's a um, it's a nice it, it's a streamer with nice action. It has some um, wound rabbit fur, and it has saddle hackles in it, and it has quite a bit of weight because it's got uh, solid dumbbell eyes, and then uh, I also weight the body of it, so it's it's got some weight to it. Uh, you could leave the you could leave the uh, the wire off the body if you wish to make it a little bit more neutrally buoyant um, or you can add or you can add thicker wire than i'm using i'm using 20 thousandths uh, non-toxic wire to make it heavier uh, because the, the body uh, you can put a lot of bulk in this fly and it's not going to show the body is is pretty bulky when you wind the rabbit strip but um, anyways it's a good wiggly streamer uh, you can tie it in uh, virtually any color you want. The most popular colors, according to the book, are black, white, yellow, and olive. And they're usually tied with a uh, uh, contrasting uh, rubber legs going down the side. The, the black one that I'm going to tie today, which looks like this, calls for orange. And I've actually, I've actually experimented. I've I've tied it with these uh, orange speckled uh, silly legs, which are you know pretty standard. And then um, I also tied some with these really super bright fluorescent orange legs that are called uh, silicone flutter legs in uh, fluorescent orange. So I you know you could you could make these legs uh, make these legs any color you want. Uh, depending on the color of the, the, the fly you're tying. But um, I, li I like the looks of the orange. It adds a nice accent to it. And um, yeah, so that's the fly. And it's got wound rabbit fur, so it's, it's really wiggly in the water. And the saddle hackles stick out the back. It has a good minnow shape. I think, uh, you know, with those legs, it could also suggest a, a crayfish uh, to the... Um, to the to the trout hawk lake lodge is that the great ted putnam watching today 
Is that you, Ted? Ted must be Ted must be back from Hawk Lake and he's bored down there in Boston, so he's watching the fly time today. Ted uh, Ted owns uh, Hawk Lake Lodge in Ontario, which is a, an incredible place for uh, particularly smallmouth bass, but um, also pike and other species. So, anybody else new? Anybody? Uh, Roger Bird, I got your Christmas card. Merry Christmas to you and all the birds. It was very nice of you to send me a Christmas card. I like seeing your family, you and Irma and, and the whole family. Anyway, um, I don't see anybody else new. So uh, give a shout out if you're new. Ed, I know you're not new. You have, I don't think you've missed one of these fly time classes. I don't think you, you, I think you and Roger Bird have not missed a single one. So uh, we, we love your, we appreciate your loyalty. Ah, Marcy Edge, Marcy Edge. Uh, apologize if I mispronounce your name. You're new. Welcome to, welcome to Fly Tying Monday. All right, enough of that. Let's tie a fly. So we're going to tie the Hawkins Hat Trick Streamer. And I am going to tie this on a, uh, size six hook, kind of standard trout size, not too big, not too small. Um, you know, if I don't, not, not knowing anything else, if I'm going to tie a trout streamer, I usually tie it in a six. It seems like they'll take a six almost any time. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, small enough that even a 12 inch fish will eat it, but it's, it's big enough so that it'll get the notice of a, you know, 20 inch plus fish. And you've got the pattern there in front of you. And I like to tie this fly in a ring eye streamer hook, which I'll show you. Um, I like these ring eye hooks. Orvis used to sell them. I don't think we do anymore. I don't know why. I guess it didn't sell that well. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of debate as to which is better, up eye, down eye, or ring eye. I don't think it really matters that much, the little bit of a change in angle. I don't think matters that much in, in hooking, uh, hooking qualities. But I like the looks of the ring eye, and that eye is straight in line with the point, which should give you the best pull. Um, on a hook so you know I, I like the ring eye dry fly hooks as well and some of the some of the nymph hooks with ring eye so anyways i like ring eye hooks and i am going to take some 20 thousandths uh non-toxic wire and wind it and you can pretty much you could pretty much cover this like three quarters of the shank with this because you're going to squeeze it together anyways. And you notice I'm winding away from me. I got this trick. I mentioned it last week when I tied with uh, Tim Flagler, but uh, the back end of the wire is where you're going to kind of bump your thread up against there. And if you want, if you wind it backwards, if you wind it toward you, when you wind your thread over that last turn, it's going to push the wire away. So it's not going to, the wire is not going to be pushing against uh, your thread. Anyway, you could do it either any way you want. So I put, I don't know how many wraps on there, enough to cover half the shank or so. And I'm just going to leave it there for a minute. And I'm going to be using a 3-0 thread or a 140 denier, if you're of the denier persuasion, instead of the O persuasion. And I'm going to put a pair of non-toxic eyes on there and you want to put them uh fairly far back maybe like three eye lengths back because um you're going to want to wind this rabbit strip a couple times in front of those eyes 
and you need to leave yourself room. So I'm gonna grab my non-toxic eyes. Silver, that's what the pattern calls for. You can make them any color you want. These are silver with a black pupil. Any color you got will work. And Tom, these are um, Bill's asking what color legs you would use if uh, you were tying an olive green body. Uh, I don't know. Orange? The orange, um, orange might be fun on a green one. Or black. Or white. <laughs> or yellow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just an accent. And adds a little wiggle. I think you could. I think I would. I would still go with the orange, the orange legs on an olive one. Yeah. So these are uh, three six three sixteenth inch size eyes, which seem to uh, be just about right with the uh, size six hook in my eye, anyways. And you're gonna put your eyes on top of the shank, and you're gonna. Take three or four turns angled like that, and then you're going to pull the eyes back into position. And when you cross the other way, that's going to straighten them out. And you want to fill you want to fill that whole space between the eyes with your thread. So don't be shy about putting lots of wraps in there, back and forth. You can figure eight it if you want. You know, you could do this kind of thing, however you want to do it. And then once you get some nice securing wraps on there, you want to bring your thread around the base above the hook shank with very tight turns. That's why I'm using uh, 30 or 140 denier thread here. There's a couple steps here where when you're attaching materials, you want to put a fair amount of pressure on, uh, on the materials. So using this heavy thread, um, you know, you know, there's no, no place here where you worry about bulk. So you can use a heavier thread here and you want to make sure that those eyes don't wiggle and don't turn, don't rely on glue to keep the eyes in place. You could put a drop of super glue in there if you want, uh, but you really wanna, wanna rely on your thread to secure those eyes, not some glue. And then you could, you could shove that uh, wire up against the eyes with your fingernail, and then hold your fingernail at the far end, just stick it against that wire and then spiral back over the wire. And then we see, see how I'm not having to push, the wire's not coming toward me, it's going away from me. So now when I, when I kind of put that little bump there to keep that wire from sliding, it's nice and neat. Any more questions at this point, Julia? Nothing? No, no questions, but someone did comment um, how, how clear your camera looks. So I agree. You know, I, this camera is, it, it, it's, it's great that it looks clear. This camera is the same camera I've been using, but I think just maybe the stream, the stream is a little bit better today, but glad it, glad it looks clear. All right, now you're gonna, well, let's wind the thread all the way back to the bend. So I'm gonna just bring that thread all the way back to the bend of the hook and let it hang. And now we're gonna prepare four saddle hackles. And these can be any old, any saddle hackles you want. Um, I found these extra long Saddle hackles have a nice quality and a nice shape. And they can be really skinny or they can be wide. I like them, I like them relatively wide on this pattern. No special reason. I just like them wide. And you, you're going to want to pick through and find four feathers that have about the same shape and profile. So here's a couple here that are relatively wide. 
Those aren't the same shape, though. I'm not going to take those two. Let's see here. Some of these are a little too webby. I don't want. I don't want the total. This is. I like that shape right there. So I'm going to try to find three more. There's one, two. And you know, it it uh, it uh, pays to to search through these feathers to make sure you get get ones that match fairly well. I don't like that one. That's got a broken piece on it. Uh, let's see, one more. These are. I've started to pick through all the good ones on here. That one's too wide. Come on, there's got to be another good one in here somewhere. Most of these are quite long and wide and webby. Ah, there's, yeah, that one's good enough. So you got four saddle hackles on the, on the table in front of you and you're on your knee. I usually put them on my knee when I'm tying and you're going to take, take them and with this one, the shiny side is down and I'm going to lay the second feather with the curvature the same. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these two in that the shiny side is down and the last one is going to go like so. So kind of line them up by hand like that. And this calls for splayed um, haggle fibers. In other words, when you look at the fly, they should splay out instead of being cupped together. And saddle hackles don't, don't have much curvature, so um, they're not going to splay a, a terribly large amount. Um, but they'll give you a little bit more action if the feathers are tied and splayed. So I'm going to take these two with the dull side facing me, and then I'm going to take the other two that just came apart, <laughs> and I'm going to put them... I've, oh, dull side. Okay. I have to have the shiny side facing me. So I'll turn them over. <laughs> I get easily confused. Turn them over so that the shiny side is down. And then the second set with the dull side facing me. So when I when I lay them all together and line up the ends, they're going to be a little bit splayed. So now I got them lined up. Now I'm going to pick all those up. And lying them flat on a table like this, isn't the best way. I find uh, putting them on my knee is uh, is the best way to do it, but I don't have a way of photographing me doing this on my knee. So I've got the fibers kind of splayed. Again, saddle hackles don't have a lot of curvature, but they're splayed out. And I'm going to bring them back to the hook, line them up, make sure they're lined up. And I probably want this to be a little bit longer than a shank length. So I'm thinking maybe right here is going to be the length of my tail from the end of my thumb. And I'm going to transfer those over. And I'm going to leave them, going to leave them long at this point and take a pinch wrap over these. So I'm going to take a loose turn over the top. I'm going to pinch the hackles and the sides of the hook and pull down. And then I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. And hopefully the feathers will be where you want them to be. If not, you can tweak them a little bit at this point. See how they look. Yeah, they're a little splayed. Not great. I might do that again. I might do that again. I might take take them back in my hand and realign them. 
Yeah, these these feathers just don't have a lot of curvature. So they're not going to splay that much, but I don't think it matters. Now let's try it again. So I'm going to take a pinch wrap and then another pinch wrap. Move forward a little bit each time you go. And now they're on there. Not very splayed. Just a little bit of a splay. And then I'm going to come up and just cut these even with my eyes, like so. And then come forward and just keep moving your fingers forward to bind that stuff down. And you don't have to worry about being too, too neat at this point. If you got any sticking out, you can get rid of them, but. So now you get kind of a mess there, but what you're going to do is wind back to the tail. And as you wind back to the tail, you can neaten that up a little bit. The main, the main thing is to make sure they're secure so that those tail fibers don't pull out when you're fishing the fly or when you catch a fish. And I got a few fibers sticking out there, but you don't even need to trim them at this point. They're not going to. They're not going to show. Any questions so far, Julia? No. Oh, we did have one. Ken asked if you could tie this fly articulated. Yeah, you could. Sure. I was thinking of uh, of tying it articulated. Um, and I, I was, was thinking that would probably be a good idea. Yeah, Joe was also asking, um, and this is just a general question that I can put in the chat if you have an, a recommendation. What a what a good great magnifying um, light is, or like if you use one, a magnifier with a light. I don't use a magnifier with a light because I can't I can't get used to having that magnifying glass uh, in front of me when I tie. I, I, I have a pair of glasses that I wear that are, um, that I can focus really close up on, but I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have a recommendation cause I can't use, I don't like it. It gets in the way. Um, and, um, I, I just don't use it. I'll tell you the, the lights that I've, uh, got for fly tying that I just got a couple of weeks ago that I love, that I highly recommend they're expensive. They're about think they're they're close to two hundred dollars a set um but they're these i think you can see them here in the background they're called loom cube they're made by a company called loom cube and they are uh they they come on a they come on a clamp that swivels and uh the light is adjustable uh, not only in in the uh, intensity, but in the color temperature. So you could tweak it more towards daylight. And I have two of them. And I put one off to the side of my vise here and a little bit in front. And then I bring the other one straight down on top. And the light is superb. Um, it's shadowless. And uh, it's shadowless. And it's and they're really bright, so it's called. They're made by a company called Loom Cube. They, uh, they're these are they're sold for streaming, so theoretically I should have those nice lights on me, one on each side if I'm streaming. But I got a nice window here. I don't need that. Um, but uh, those Loom Cube lights are the best fly tying lights I've ever used. Yeah, again, they're not they're not inexpensive. I think it's like. Set of two is like 189 bucks or something. So that they're not inexpensive, but they're the best, again, the best I've ever used. Okay. Okay. We have just a couple more questions. One, Roger is asking uh, for his son that uh, his son, Tom, wants to know if this is a good place in the fly tying to uh, tie off in case your thread breaks. Yep. Sure. Okay. This would be a really good place to tie off. Yep. Great. And don't and then, forget, don't forget if your if your thread breaks, you always want to have a pair of hackle pliers handy so that you can hang some weight on that thread to hold it in place and then reattach your thread. 
Mm. Okay. And then Jacob's asking, do you ever tie in two hackles at a time, i.e. near side, the, the near side than far side to have better control over splay and orientation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do it that way too. Yep. You can do wow. it that way too. Absolutely. Yep. Good question. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Good question though. Okay. So now we're going to, uh, no more questions at this point. No. Okay. So now we are going to prepare our rabbit, uh, rabbit strip or get our rabbit strip. And the easiest way to tie this is with what's called cross cut rabbit fur, which has the fur basically coming off only from one side. What they do is instead of cutting the rabbit strips uh, with the grain of the hide, they cut it across so that the hair, it's like a hackle. So the, the hair really is, is biased toward one side. You can see that's a flat piece. Um, this is the easiest, easiest way to do it. If you don't have cross-cut rabbit, it's not a big deal. You can tie this with a regular zonker strip. You just have to manipulate the hair uh, with your fingers a little bit more. So you can do it either way. And you'll notice when you have a rabbit strip that um, it one way strokes with the grain. So this the way I'm stroking is with the grain. And you want to go to the opposite end against the grain. Actually, this one's no. <laughs> Let's see how this is going to go here. <laughs> Let's go to the vice and we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you why I'm laughing. Um, when you wind this rabbit strip, you want it to wind so that it folds back like that, like a hackle. So you have to tie this in so that it's going to go that way. And you have to, you have to actually look at your rabbit strip to figure out. So I want to tie in this end, not the other end. I want to tie in this end and I'm going to just, um, take my scissors. Let's go over here. I'm going to take my scissors and just cut the hair off a little bit of that end and hold it so that I've got a piece, uh, just a piece of hide to tie with and not hair. And I'm going to hold that hide facing toward me so that the rabbit strip is sticking out the other way, the opposite way. So the hide is toward me. And then I'm going to tie this down and put lots of pressure on that hide so that it doesn't come out. Don't be afraid to take a few extra really tight turns. And then bring your thread right up to the eyes. And then you're going to, oh, and the skin side should be up. And so when you start this first wind, it's going to fold back like so. And then just take barely touching turns all the way up to the eyes. Right about there. And tie it off. Backgrounds in the way here. Tie it off with two or three tight turns. Put that piece aside. You're going to need it again. And then stroke the fibers back and really secure that hide there. And also build up a little flat base of thread to put your legs in. So fill that, fill that right up with thread. You're going to cover this up. 
but you want a little bit of a flat area to put your legs on. I think that's good enough. Now you're going to take the rubber legs of your choice, the color that you've chosen, and I'm going to use these speckled <laughs> speckled rubber legs. And I like four on this fly. Who knows why? Could use three, could use two, could use five. I'm going to use four. I like four. I'm going to cut four of them. Maybe I got five. Nope, I got four. Nice long piece of rubber legs. Come back over to your fly. And oh, the legs should probably extend to halfway down the tail. And you want to lay them so that they flatten out against the side because you want them to kind of distribute themselves. So don't try to tie them all in one spot, but just kind of place them there. Take a couple of tight turns, maybe three tight turns, so that they kind of, you know, extend across the side of the fly, like so. And then you want to take the, the, the other side, and you first want to bind them down against the far side. And then I like to turn my turn my vise on the side and just take a couple of securing turns, making sure that you got them coming down along the side. And then, you know, trim them in the same place that the other ones extended to about. Now you got those rubber legs coming down both sides of the fly and then probably want to neaten up that rubber leg attachment so you take a few more turns this bulk behind the eyes will actually also keep them from rotating so much then you're going to take your um, piece of rabbit fur your cross-cut rabbit if you got it and Figure out which way it's going to go. I don't want to tie it in this way. I want to tie it in this way. So it's going to lay back the way I want it to. And then tie it in. Skin side up. Lots of good turns here. Make sure it stays in place. And then bring your thread up almost to the eye, maybe an eye length back. And then you want to make sure that that rabbit fur is going to extend back. And I tied this in wrong it's not going to go the way I want it to go. So I got to unwind. Tim Flagler probably would have had a clever way of figuring out. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to the other end. And if I tie this in like this, yeah, if I tie this in like this, then it's going to flip over and go the right way. Okay. So, again, skin side up, facing me. Bind that thing down. Really well. Come up in front of the eyes. In front of the eye. Now it's going to fold the right way. Now it's going to fold toward the back. Take a turn behind the eyes. Like so, 
and then come around in front and take about two turns in front. I might be able to get three here. Yeah, I think I'll just do like two and a half. And then at this point, I think it pays to wet your fingers to separate that hair so that you can get in there and tie it off. Still got plenty of room by the eye. And then cut your strip. Fold it back and bind that. And I like to put a pretty big head on this to make sure that you've wound up onto that rabbit strip so that it's really secure so that it doesn't come out. So you can wind a pretty big head on this guy. Where'd that come from? What was that sticking out there? Where'd that come from? So now you've got the, you know, you kind of got the head buried within the fur. And if you want to get really fancy, you can get a brush. Oh no, I think we lost them. Hold please. Maybe we can get them back. Does anyone have any great jokes they want to tell? Oh no. Looks like Tom lost internet. No. All right, let's see here. Hold tight. See if we can find him. Who's asking for fly fishing stuff for the holidays? Oh, thanks, Roger. <laughs> oh, no, we lost him. Oh, no, you don't want... I. I'm just a producer. You don't want to see me tie anything. <laughs> oh, no. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, Tim heard him. OK, let's see. I'll give you the scoop. Let me what's what scoop can I share about Tom? Uh, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Tom makes his own chocolate and he was just telling me, oh, there he is. Whew. I don't know what happened. It wasn't, it must, is something in the, in stream that screwed up. Is, I'm glad you're back. Cause man, I'm not a good, I'm not, I'm not, you know, this isn't a face, this is a face for radio. <laughs> Where did we leave off? Uh, I don't exactly know. I mean, you've been gone about two minutes. Uh, if if somebody could tell me where I left off, I will uh, I will start again. They were asking me to share things about you that maybe they didn't know, so I was telling them that you make chocolate. But oh. we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that Tom was telling me the reason we were late to begin with was we were talking about chocolate and that he made a new a new chocolate. You had just finished the head, is what they said, is what William said. Just finished the head? Oh! <laughs> I just finished And then they want to hear about chocolate later. Behind the eye. Oh, brushing. Okay. So, yeah. So, we didn't, they didn't miss much. No. Brushing. I'm glad someone was listening. Yeah. Brushing, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just take your brush, and you know you can brush brush it back to kind of. You don't have to. Kind of makes it look a little bit better. That's all. And then 
Then you whip finish and put a drop of head cement on there and you're done. Yeah, I, I have no idea what happened there. It, everything was still working at my end. Yeah, so it there's... meant that you had lost connectivity on that's yeah. what I saw on the back end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All I all I did was go out of Streamyard, go out of the studio and come back in and it uh, hmm. it Weird. worked. So okay. anyway, that is the uh Hawkins What the hell happened there? Not saying your battery's exhausted. No, that's not I true. I think your I think your equipment just needs a holiday break, maybe. Battery exhausted, no way. I can't see you. I can hear you. There. Oh. I'm supposed to hook up to four batteries. What the hell? Oh, anyway, forget it. Um, that's hooked up to four different batteries. It must not have been charging on me over the past week. <laughs> All my other cameras work. <laughs> Jeez. We've still got over a hundred people are holding on. <laughs> well, at least my at least my camera hit isn't freezing anymore. I fixed that. It's true. So it's true. And I don't know what that other problem was, but we won't worry about it. That's the internet. That's that's live stuff for you, right? Show Tim me. never has this problem. Yeah, Tim never does this alone, <laughs> Roger. He he wouldn't dare do it do it alone. <laughs> Any color variation on that. Um, well, I like black. I mean, black's the first streamer I'll try, regardless of water conditions. Um, the next would probably be white, you know, to, uh, after black, I white, and I might, I might still keep the orange legs in the white or maybe yellow legs. Um, and then after I've exhausted black and white, I would probably try something like a yellow and if that didn't work i would try a brown and last i would probably go to an olive i don't have a lot of faith in olive streamers although a lot of people use them and like them i don't so anyway uh adrian yes uh schloppen would work instead of i didn't use hen hackle actually i used saddle hackle but schlop any any hackle would work actually i think Depends on what how you want the final shape to be. Um, this this is going to be fairly skinny at the end. And yes, Rick, purple would probably work great. Silver would work. I think you you the, the nice thing about this pattern is you can tie it in in any color you want. And your particular uh, stream that you fish, uh, whether it's trout or steelhead, they they may have a color preference. You know, certain colors seem to work better in certain waters. And then, so I would tie this in whatever color works best in your your local rivers. And Frank, I don't need an AC adapter. It's, it's, uh, there's, there's four, I, I should get, I should be able to do this for six hours with the battery pack I have connected to this camera. It's just a, some dummy didn't uh, set the, charger to charge last monday and so they probably all ran out over the week i'll make sure i charge them up before next week all right any other questions all good questions today black and blue yeah black and blue for steelhead would be a good color combination maybe a uh, black black uh body with blue legs that would be pretty cool or maybe or maybe even change that last piece of rabbit fur um to blue you know so make the make the saddle hackles and the body black and then put blue rubber legs and, and blue rabbit fur in the front that would be pretty cool roger wants to know what happened to the texas brew fest roger you know um i had to i had to reach a decision and um, and this this winter, I, I'm just not just not comfortable. When I signed up to do those shows, I was uh, vaccinated and and pretty pretty cocky about um, 
about COVID. And since, since then, I've uh, had a number of friends who were vaccinated and boosted and got COVID. And I'm just not comfortable going to any events um, in the near future with uh, a lot of people. Uh, shaking a lot of hands and, and being indoors with a lot of people. So um, I just uh, kind of made that decision. And I apologize because I, I love that. I love that event, but um, just not ready to, I don't like being sick. I'm not worried about dying, but I don't like being sick. <laughs> you know, Life's too short to, to, to take a week off laying in bed. So I got too many things I want to do. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, if, if, are there any more questions? We've, you know, we've still got, still got a little time left in our hour. If, if anybody has any, any questions, um, glad to, glad to answer them. What will Santa be bringing you this year? I don't know, William. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. I, I have no idea what Santa's gonna. Well, Santa brought me a, a, a grandson, my first my first grandchild. So uh, that's that's all the that's all the Christmas present I need. I'm gonna see him. I'm gonna see him over New Year's. So I'm pretty excited about that. Can you tie this larger for salt water, like in the size two? Yeah, I think this would be a really good salt water fly. Of course, any you know any bait, good bait fish is going to be good in salt water. But I think this would be a really good salt water pattern. In fact, um, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of tying some of these for salt water for both for tarpon. Um, I probably won't put the I probably won't put the heavy eyes on the tarpon flies, uh, but for striped bass and uh, you know even in small size for bonefish, this might work. So yeah. Certainly will work for redfish. Any resources for the San Juan? Uh, Kira, I would, I would look up uh, on the Orvis website for the Orvis uh, endorsed operation on the San Juan. And uh, it's, um, oh God. Oh, I can't remember the name of the operation, but there's a really good Orvis and Doris operation on the San Juan. Julia, maybe you can find that um, and, and put it in there. Yeah, there's a fishing report and then there's an Orvis endorsed operation as well. Uh, yeah, you have to be careful. Uh, that's... Uh, R2, that's a that's a good that's a good point. Um, you don't want too thick of a zonker strip with this uh, because um, because a really thick strip will be tough to tie in. So you need to use a, a thinner a thinner um, a thinner zonker strip. All right, everyone. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming today. It, it just means a lot to us that so many of you are taking time out of your day to come and, and tie with us and ask questions and um, give us a chance to get to know you. Again, if, if you're new for Fly Tying Monday, welcome. We have, a, we have a, a fun crew that comes in here every week, so welcome to the gang. And um, we will see you next week when we will be tying. What are we tying next week? Julia? We are tying a, I just put it in, a tactical spider hair and partridge fly. Ah, tactical spider hair and partridge. Yeah. It'll be our last okay. tie of the season. The last tie of 2021. Yeah. Yep. yep. So Merry Christmas, everybody. And you all stay safe and healthy and have a great one. And um, we'll see you next Monday. Yeah. Have a good holiday, everyone. Take care.